everyone, it's Kristen again from The Crafty Kitchen, and today I wanted to make another Halloween card um, using that cool gatefold card that I made the other day. So I'm going to be using Happy Hauntings again. This cartridge is so awesome. I love it. I use it all the time. And I was flipping through it, looking for images that people don't use very often, and um, at least I've seen online, and I came across this little mouse, this little mouser here, with... Um, his little trick-or-treat basket and his little mask. So I thought I'd try to make a card around him. So um, first thing I want to do is score my card. And for a gatefold card, you have a four and a quarter by 11 piece of cardstock, which I have right here in front of me. And then what you want to do is score it at uh, two and three quarters. And eight and a quarter. Okay. And then you fold those in, fold the sides down. And you've got your gatefold card. And we're going to put the mouse right on the front here, and then you're going to open it up, and it's going to have the sentiment on the inside. So the first thing I want to do is put all the papers together before I work on my mouse. Okay, the first thing I want to do is get all of my inside papers and my panel papers put on my card. So I'm going to do the big side first, and I have a black piece of glittered cardstock. All of this cardstock is from the Die Cuts with a View Midnight Spell stack. I love, love, love that stack. Um, the black is cut at four by five and a quarter, and the white is cut by three, cut at three and a quarter, three and three quarters, sorry, by five. And then I took my Martha Stewart Spiderweb Punch, and I just punched the bottom of it. And so when you put it on there, you can see the black through the spiderweb, and I thought that was really cute. So I'm going to take my little ATG. Love this pink ATG. Okay. And then I'm going to take my Zig 2A glue pen and just go over a few of these so they stick down to the mat. Once that's done, center it on my mat like so, and there we go. That is the inside of our card. And I'm going to go ahead and put it on the inside. I ha For a while, I had trouble getting this ATG to work, and I was getting really frustrated because people had talked so highly of it. And I finally figured out what I was doing wrong. And what I was doing wrong is I wasn't letting go of the trigger before I pulled it away from the paper and so the glue is just balling up. So if you're having problems, try that and see if it helps you any. Okay, there we go. Set that to the side. Um, for my panels, I've got three different things I'm using for my panels. For the outside, Bella. For the outside, I have um, this black shimmery spiderweb paper, and then I have this purple glitter paper to go behind it. And um, the, the glitter paper is cut at two and a half by four, and then the spiderweb paper is cut at two and a quarter by three and three quarters. So I'm just gonna put all these together. For the inside, I'm using white glittered paper and the same spider paper. All right, those are done, and now I'm going to put the insides in. Okay, 
So the inside of the card is done besides the sentiment. For the outside of the card, I'm going to glue this left one on here like this. Now, the other side, the, the little mouse is going to be glued onto this side, so we don't want to put anything over here. But for this side, I, it looked kind of plain by itself. So before I glued it on there, I found these brads at Michael's, these specialty brads. Um, I have a little set, too, and these are a big set. And the black things are roses, and then these silver things are kind of spider webby looking circles. So I thought I would add some circles to this side of my car to kind of give it a little a little something so it's not so plain. And to do that, I take my little circle punch. Um, I don't remember how big the circle is on this, but it's super tiny. And I just decide what side it's going to go on here. I think it's going to go like that. So I take my little circle punch and do one here and do one here. I don't know if I want to do a third one. I'll have to just look and see how the two look first. And then I'll decide if I want a third one. Slide those brads through. This card is pretty similar to the um, witch frame I card I made the other day, but I really like the way it turned out, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> so it's going to look a little something like that. I think it looks good with two. I don't know if I want three or not. Hmm. Well, let's try. I'll do three. Change it up a little bit. So then I'm just going to glue this on. Okay, and that is done. The next thing we need to do is add our little mouse. Okay, here's my little mouse all put together. I cut him at three and a half inches, and he is cut using coordinations paper, which is probably my favorite paper to use in the Cricut. But I cut him a little differently than um, they have in the handbook. In the handbook, the mouse is black, and so then they just had you cut um, a paw to go over the uh, trick-or-treat bag. But I wanted... Um, I didn't want a black mouse because my card is already black. So I cut a gray mouse. And then what I did is I actually cut this, his paw, three times. And I used two on his actual paw so it looks like he's wearing little gloves with his bandit outfit. And then I kind of cut one a little and I made him a nose. So he wasn't all just one color. So here's my mouse. And the mouse is going to sit. He's going to spill over a little bit into this side of the card but he's mostly going to be on this side of the card and then so that way you can open it and he, he'll open this way so let's get him on there
So there he is on the card, and then it opens like that. Now, to add a little bit of bling to the inside, I really wanted to add some candy corn because my sentiment that I'm going to stamp says trick or treat. So I really wanted to put some candy. Well, none of the Halloween cartridges that Cricut has has a candy corn on it. I heard that Doodle Charms has a candy corn on it, but I don't have that cartridge. So I decided to just make my own. And the way I did it is, here's the other half I didn't use. I cut, I used my basic shapes. I cut three circles on three different sizes, and then I glued them on top of each other. And then I took my scissors, and I just cut a triangle off like that, and I just kept going all the way around. And so you get, I got four per side. Okay, and then I would take my scissors again and I would round the top. And it looks kind of like that. Now, you can use white, orange, and yellow cardstock and take care of it like that. But I wanted to make mine a little different. So I used um, my Martha Stewart glitter. I bought that huge packet of glitter with a 40% off coupon and I never use it. So I wanted to get it out and try to and use it. Um, I used the Fire Opal for the orange, the crystal, fire, crystal Fine for the white, and then yellow barite for the yellow. And I just glued it on with her craft glue. So I've been letting them dry for a little while. And this is what I came up with. I think they're pretty cute. Not to be biased, but I think they're pretty cute. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to put one on each of these and probably two in here, and then I'm going to put my stamp right here. So before I glue these, I want to go ahead and put my cinnamon on there. I found this in the dollar bin at Michael's. I love that dollar bin. It is the greatest. Trick or treat. There we go. Oh, that's cute. Okay, so let's adhere these little sparkly candy corns. So here they are. So shiny. And I don't really want to use my ATG, so I have these double-sided mounting squares and I think I'm just going to use some of those so stick that on there peel it off I think I'm gonna put one up here I'm gonna put one down below that And then I was pro I'm probably going to put one up here and one down here. So let's get those mounted. Okay, and there we have it. Trick or treat on the inside. Our little mouse on the outside. Oh, so cute. This is adorable. I hope you enjoyed this card, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I have a thing on the side of my blog for, where you can contact me, and I hope you have a fabulous day. Bye!